Tess is a spacecraft that NASA recently launched with the help of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket that is being used to detect planets throughout the entire sky. This spacecraft will stare at the sky and get a really good sense of where there are planets throughout the entire sky. Some parts of it will be able to observe for significant periods of time, but a good chunk of it at least for 26 days at a time. The way that it works is it will stare at a particular patch of sky for 26 days and then continuing to point in different directions until it's observed all of the sky in the northern hemisphere and then it will start to point towards the southern hemisphere and continue in this back and forth manner to really get a full complete coverage of the entire sky. It's expected to be able to find about 20,000 exoplanets during its time in just the first two years and quite possibly more after then. And using the data from this telescope, we should be able to see all kinds of neat things. The way that it works is it will collect all of the light from a particular star and we can use these light curves as they're called to try to detect if there's some kind of a planet that's on them. And there are so many of these light curves because TESS has the ability to literally look at every single star that's above a certain brightness in its field of view, which is thousands and thousands of stars that they can't actually do this. Computers are very poor at detecting exoplanets, and you can actually assist in the effort to try to determine whether or not that there are exoplanets in the sky. And so I'm going to show you this website. This website is Zooniverse, where you can actually assist NASA in detecting extrasolar planets. And I'll have a link in the description for you. So this is my personal account. And we're going to look at some of the examples here just at random and see some of the kinds of things that we can see from these light curves. So this is a variable star of some kind. It goes brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer. And you can see these individual pots, points are how bright it was at a particular point in time. There's no exoplanets in here, nothing of particular note. So we're just going to go ahead and hit done. This is a very steady light curve. You can see here, this is the average brightness and it goes plus or minus um, a tenth of a percent roughly. And that's a very, very low signal, low noise signal. The telescope is designed to be able to be very, very accurate in its estimates and we don't really see anything. Don't see anything in this one. This is an interesting thing. Now this is actually an artifact of tests. They've occasionally seen these periods of time where there's some kind of an instability. And basically the thought is, is some bright object poked into the field of view. Uh, Mars was assumed to be the bright object for some of the point in time. The way that the cameras will work is with this bright object, it will kind of smear the light around. Just like if you point your camera at a light, you're going to see all of the fingerprints on the lens and it's just going to be kind of smeared and not really that great of an image. It's the same kind of thing with tests. And so this portion of it's not really usable and there's nothing observable in the rest of this. So we're going to go ahead and click done on there. There's another artifact in this range and they have fewer data points because of that. Now, this curve has that same kind of artifact, the same days 20 to 22 to 24. Um, there might be something in there, but it's really difficult to tell. So we're just going to keep going until we find something. This might be something, so I'm going to go ahead and tag it. But if other people agree that it could be, then we could do that. This is probably an eclipsing binary. So you could have two bright stars that are orbiting close to each other that one star will pass in front of the other. So when the brighter of the two stars passes in front, then it will um, be significantly, when it passes behind the other star, it'll significantly block out the light. When the dimmer star passes in front, it will cause a little dip like this. And so this is probably one of those, although it could just be a pulsating. Now this, is what we're looking for, although this is probably not a planetary transit. This is probably an eclipsing binary of a little bit more direct form where it really blocks out a significant portion of light. 
but we'll go ahead and tag that and let the scientists figure this out. This is absolutely a transit. This is what we're looking for. So you had the star, it was very constant brightness and then it passed down. The optimal is kind of a U shape where you see it gradually go down and that kind of gets into a uh, just a little bit of gradual darkening and then comes back up here. So this is a planetary transit. I bet you this is a test one. No. So we just found some kind of an extra solar planet possibly. Although that one point, they're not going to be able to accurately determine that there's a planet there. If they can see that same shape of a dip happening on a regular basis, though, then a planet's been found. This is probably nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that, although that looks like a close false alarm. So you can see all kinds of interesting shapes that happen here. This is that same kind of artifact they were talking about earlier. So there might be something here. So I'm going to go ahead and tag it just so that they have it. This is absolutely a eclipsing binary. So I'm going to go ahead and tag just the big pulses. But this is, you can see very, very clearly that the brighter star is passing in front and then the dimmer star um when the dimmer star is blocked it's a much smaller dip than when the brighter star is plucked you can put a little talking in here you see eclipsing binary everybody's already said that i don't even need to at this point in time so we'll keep looking at just a few more of these sometimes you get some of these broad changes and it's really fascinating to me to see how much the light changes in this this is huge this is a star that became three times brighter for about two days you can hit the done and talk and see what's going on this is called a cladoclysmic variable so this is something that people have found of note and i'm actually going to mark this as a favorite because i haven't seen one of these before But anyways, you can keep looking through all of these things and they have a nice little tutorial that helps. Um, if you see something interesting though, you know, hit the done and talk button like I did and you can often learn about it. There are people who know a lot more about this than I do who can help you figure out what's going on if you see some unusual artifact. And sometimes you can even learn about the planetary transits that they might find while you're at it. And anyways, there's a lot of these really neat things where people who are interested in space exploration can take a few minutes out of their day and really help to help the scientists figure this data because computers can't do everything right now. And this would be something very, very difficult in this noisy amount of data to look for a tiny dip, especially where you see there are some regular patterns in here. Like this is probably, this could be a transit. Um, it would be very difficult for a computer to figure this out, though, whereas a human can just kind of eyeball it and say, hey, that's it. But if you want to, link in the description. You guys can check it out and let me know if you guys have any cool things that you find. Post a link to some unusual artifact and I'll do the best I can to explain it or we can just all talk about it in the discussions. But thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.